coffee coffee with Tim Black all right there's been a lot of talk about Keith Ellison leading the DNC he would be taking the place of the disgraced Donna Brazil who took the place of the disgraced Debbie Wasserman Schultz and there's a lot of pushback about Keith Ellison so what I would like to do is give you a little bit more context and a little bit more information about Keith Ellison's voting record, which many haven't really talked about yet. And then I will go into uh, some issues that my friend Jimmy Dore raised about Keith Ellison. Go to ontheissues.org where you'll get all the information that I'm using in this video. At the top of the list was immediate withdrawal of U.S. troops from Iraq. I am calling for an immediate withdrawal of U.S. troops from Iraq. I oppose the war. Before it began, I was against the war once it started, and I'm the only candidate calling for an immediate withdrawal of troops. This was back in November 7th, 7th, 2006. He voted yes on banning armed forces in Libya without congressional approval. That's how he voted. He voted that in order for Obama to install troops, he would have to go through Congress. He voted yes on removing U.S. armed forces from Afghanistan. Not what he thought. Not what he wrote, what he voted. He voted yes on investigating Bush impeachment for lying about Iraq. He voted yes on redeploying U.S. troops out of Iraq starting in 90 days. Impeach Dick Cheney for lying about Iraq. <laughs> Member of the Out of Iraq Congressional Caucus. Terminate funding for Iraq December 31st, 2011. Defund U.S. military presence in Afghanistan. Now that we talked about the good, let's talk a little bit about the maybe not so good or at least the, at least the questionable. And that would be Libya and Syria. Both issues Jimmy Dore brought up in this video. On Libya, Keith Ellison's on the record saying that he did not want the U.S. involvement to grow in Libya, that it should be limited in scope and duration and he was against mission creep and in ground forces. I don't think that goes far enough. I don't think we should have been in Libya. So I agree with Jimmy there. Uh, secondly, he brings up, Jimmy brings up Syria, right? No fly zone. Did set against a no fly zone in Syria, and I don't think the U.S. needs to be involved in Syria. Once again, I am against regime change. I am. So I don't disagree with Jimmy's stance on Questions about Ellison well, as it pertains to Syria and Libya. But I think we need to put it in the context of how did he vote, what was his stances, and how he voted on other issues that are also very important. We can't just focus on what we don't like. Let's focus on what we do like and talk about that too. Include that in your conversation. Now, super PAC money. Jimmy brought this up. I want to talk about that because Ellison didn't take a lot of super PAC money. Um, and he is against Citizens United. He would like to see that overturned. That's my understanding, and I support that. And that, to me, is more important than a lot of the other criticisms because we do need to address that and say, okay, Ellison, where do you stand on this? How will you lead the party? What example will you set going forward? And I think a lot of times we get caught up in the past. Let's also talk about going forward, and does he have a... A, a history of flip-flopping. See, because then if he has a history of flip-flopping, which, which I see no evidence for Ellison, but if that's the case, then that'd be a big, big deal to me. Should be a big deal to you too, I hope. But I see no flip-flopping in his resume. Um, so, so based on those things that I just brought up, I think that as a member of the Progressive Caucus, if you have such a dis just dislike for Ellison. I'm wondering where else you're going to go. For the record, I really like Nina Turner. Populist. Populist language. For the people language. Now, it's not about Republicans liking Ellison. Of course they don't like him. And I would like to point out that that's something Jenk Uger said, and I agree with that, man. So, uh, I, 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 great, great analysis there, Jenk. You know, a lot of Republicans don't like Ellison. They're, who do they like that's a Democrat? No, nope, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And I'm not talking about 
everyone who votes Republican, I'm talking about the Republican Party itself. So, um, Nina Turner, Tulsi Gabbard, these are, these are the people that I could see in that position. But Ellison is also a good choice, especially when you juxtapose Ellison next to Howard Dean. Is there really a conversation to be had here, folks? Really? Really? Um, you know, Howard Dean's been taking corporate money. He's been, he's a, been a lobbyist since he left the DNC position. That's what he's been doing. Raising money for Big Pharma. So are we really comparing these two people? We can't. We can't be comparing these two people. So it's sort of a no-brainer, in my opinion, though everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And for the record, I sent a DM to Keith Ellison. I asked him about his stance on Syria and a no-fly zone, and when he responds to me, I will update this video with his response. If he doesn't respond, then you may not see a video, or you, you may see a video. I don't know. I may do a video on him not responding to my question, okay? But, um, look, I understand that people want to try to reform the Democratic Party. I get that, right? My thing is, is it reformable without the support of the Democrats? And I think Ellison is a step in the direction of reforming the party and, and realizing that we have to go another way, not just with establishment Democrats. I don't think Ellison as a, is an establishment Democrat. So, with that being said, Green Party or start a new party is a very reasonable approach to your disdain or dislike for the Democratic Party, which I, I, I share the same feeling of what the direction of the Democratic Party. And I'm not saying that about all people who vote Democrat or Democratic supporters. I'm talking about the party when I criticize Democrats. I'm talking about Democratic Party leadership, not you, Democratic voter. It's not personally about you, okay? But I think Ellison will be a good step in the right direction. And I don't believe this is all about um, uh, identity politics. That's something else Jimmy brought up and a couple other folks. I think we need to show inclusiveness and the path forward. But that's not the only reason why Ellison should be uh, considered for the DNC chairmanship. It's not just that he's a Muslim, which I didn't even know, Right. What my reason, and it has nothing to do with how I feel about him per se. I don't even, I didn't even know that that's a selling point. In this climate, him being a Muslim is a selling point. You think that's going to, you know, sell him to the American public with all the Islamophobia going on? Come on, man. No, nah, that's not a selling point. What's a selling point is that when he speaks, he speaks of a populist tone of things that concern average people. That's that's the uh, selling point. It's not that he's Muslim or black. Is that where we're going now? Every time there's a Muslim or a black person doing something, or particularly African-American black person, we're going to be like, oh, this is identity politics because this person's black. Wouldn't it be identity politics if it was Nina? Wouldn't it be identity politics if it was Tulsi Gabbard? You're going to make that claim on everything. All right? That's all I have on this issue Go to TimBlackTV.com, get yourself some Tim Black special blend coffee from Black Mamba for the holidays or whatever. And I'd also like to shout out Jimmy Doe on his video, very good video, starting the conversation. Shout out to Ben Dixon for assistance, uh, for, his, for his input, as well as uh, Ferran Cousins from The Ring of Fire, who put it down on this issue as well. And look, guys. Everyone has an opinion. I'd like to see what you think. Do you think Keith Ellison is a more viable choice over the corporate Baghdadi, Howard Dean, Big Pharma whore? Peace. <laughs>